This video is brought to you by Flash Routers. If you want to learn more about protecting your home and all the devices connected to your network, click the link in the description. TCP IP is a set of protocols that make up the internet. It's how we're able to connect all these different services together, email, messaging, web browsers, whatever, using TCP IP. Now TCP IP, particularly the IP part, has some special addresses. For example, you may have seen 192.168.1.1 or maybe 127.0.0.1. What I want to do today is talk about those different addresses and talk about how they interact with the real internet using a thing called network address translation or NAT for short. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so an IP address is made up of four bytes. This is for IP version four, made up of four bytes, which we express as a number dot, a number dot, a number dot. So as I said earlier, 192.168.1.1. Now, most addresses are out there in the public. So when you connect to androidauthority.com or you connect to YouTube to watch this video, you connect to Google, whatever, it's using one of those addresses to find that server. Amongst all the millions of different servers out there, it uses that address to find that server so it can connect to it and get the information that you want back. However, in our houses or in our businesses, we can have private networks, networks that we control, that we have all the, uh, you know, administer completely. We can do however we want. We can build them however we want. And they need to have also TCP IP addresses, IP addresses, a something dot something dot something dot something address so that we can have an internal network between our servers and our desktops and our phones and our tablets and our you know Google Homes and our Alexas and our Echoes and whatever we want to use on our network. Now there is a special range of addresses that are assigned just for using on a private network. And the most popular one is 192.168.1.1.0.1 maybe. There are a few others, for example, there's 10 dot x dot x dot x whatever you want and there's also 172.16 through to 172.31 but that's one's a bit more complicated so people don't tend to use it they either use 192168 or 10 dot something or other now since we're using this 192168 address it means that the network in your house or in your business is the same as the network in my house because we're all using the same addresses but they're private so my network doesn't ever interact with your network and your internet network doesn't interact with somebody else's and we can build our networks in our houses, servers, laptops, devices, mobile devices, cameras, smart speakers, televisions, whatever we want to do, they can all share these addresses and it doesn't matter if they overlap with the ones in your place because they are completely private. And so as I said, because it's 192168, most routers that you get, whether that's a Wi-Fi router or a router from your uh, internet provider, by default, when they boot up, they have this address, 192.168.1.1 or maybe 0.1. And actually, you might have a piece of paper that comes with it that says, to configure this, go to, open your web browser and go to 192.168.0.1 or whatever, and then type in the password and whatever. And that's how it talks to that router because it's the private address. And you've got a router with 192.168.1.1. I've got a router with 192.168.1.1. And that doesn't matter because they are private and completely separate from each other. In fact, here in my house, I have one router with 192.168.1.1, another one with 192.168.2.1, and my flash router for my permanent VPN has got 192.168.11.1, so 11.1. So that's how it's all done here in my house, and they're fine because it's completely private to what I'm doing here. Now, at some point, a laptop or a mobile uh, phone that's connected to your internal network wants to go out onto the internet, and to do that, it has to go through uh, your modem that's come from your uh, ISP or through your flash router over the VPN. And to do that, it needs to have some kind of address translation so that my 192.168. whatever doesn't conflict with your one. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. But before we get to that address translation, I want to mention the other address, 127.0.0.1. And this is called the local host address. Now, the thing about the local host address is it means this device. And so if I wanted to connect to myself, so for example, if I was testing a web server running on my PC, and I also have Chrome or Firefox running on my PC, and I want to connect to my PC, 
I don't need to worry about what 192 address it's got or what even public internet address it's got. I can do it through 127.0.0.1 and it will always connect back to myself. Now the interesting thing about 127.0.0.1 is it never actually goes out onto the internet or out onto the local network. It doesn't send the packet out onto the network and then kind of suck it back in again. What it does is it goes right through the whole software into the Linux, into Windows, whatever you're using, right down to the very bottom, right down to the bit, just before it physically puts it onto the Ethernet card or onto the, you know, the cable. It says, no, we're not doing that. We'll just go straight back up again. So it goes down through what they call the stack and then back up through the stack and then connects to the relevant service. So nothing you ever send on 127.001 ever appears on the network. However, to the service that you're connecting to, it seems like it came in over the network. And that's great for when you want to test your own servers, email, web servers. Sometimes even there are other local devices. I had a RAID card once that you access by opening a web browser to 127.0.01 and then a port number, and that was actually on the RAID card uh, plugged into the machine. So there are lots of uses for it. it doesn't actually have to go out onto the network. So I mentioned a moment ago about a network address translation. If I have a device on my network, a laptop, 192.168.1.7, for example, and it wants to connect to androidauthority.com. Now, if you have an, a laptop on your network, 192.168.1.7, and it wants to connect to the internet, how do we know which one of these two devices is actually the genuine 192.168.1.7? Well, of course, they both are. And how it works is that as that packet of information, that packet, network packet, flows through your modem and out onto the internet through your service provider, inside that modem, there's a little table. And what that table says is, ah, dot seven wants to connect to uh, YouTube to watch Gary's video or Gary's speed test G video. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify the source address to be the name of the, the address of the modem on the internet because it has a public uh, internet address and I'm going to change the port number to be something unique and this combination of the address and the port number means that when it comes back it looks up and says ah port number 12727 okay I assigned that and I'm actually going to means that goes back to this laptop and the same thing happens on your house when you send out that information that little table does a lookup changes the address sends it off and it will go back to your modem through your uh, internet provider and then when it sees that combination of that special port number that it assigned to it looks up in the table and then it sends it to your laptop and so this network address translation NAT allows things on our private networks 192.168 or 10.0.0. whatever allows them to go out onto the internet and to come back over the internet now there are some disadvantages to this system one of course is that address translation takes uh, a little bit of time and if you have a very weak modem a very cheap modem that can kind of slow things down there but mo most of the time nowadays those modems are pretty good at doing that but it also means of course that you can't initiate a connection from outside on the internet into your house which most of the time is actually really good because it provides a kind of basic level of firewall in the fact that it's only when i initiate a connection outside on the internet that i can get a reply i don't want just anybody trying to connect in to my laptop to my phone to my thing and that won't work because actually the nat itself provides a very basic firewall now if you do need to connect through to some kind of server that you're running a game server or a web server on your network, then most modems have the ability to define rules that say, if something comes in for this address on this port, whatever happens, fall it through to this machine, .11 or .21, whatever, on your network and make sure it gets there. Flash Routers was the first ever recipient of the Gary Explains approved award. Flash Routers provide the hardware, that's a router, and the software in custom open source firmware, so you can have a permanent VPN connection with it, you are guaranteed everything is flowing over a VPN. I use mine every day. Okay, so what we've looked at is there are some special IP addresses, 192.168.something.something and 10.something.something.something that are for your private use to build your own network in your house or in your business, in your school, in your university, wherever. There's also a special address, 1.27.0.0.1, which means connect back to myself, and that information never goes out onto the network. It goes right down through the stack and then back up again to connect to 
the web server or whatever it is that you're trying to connect to. And we've also quickly looked at network address translation, that how your modem is able to take those private addresses, 192.168 or whatever, and then turn them into an address that can be used on the internet. And on the way back, it does the reverse translation so that it can get back to your original machine. So there you go. If you've ever seen 192.168.1.1, now you know why it's there and what it means. Okay, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget the Speed Test G channel. I suppose that's it. I'll see you in the next one.